Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from tutvid.com and today we're going to take a look at using Adobe After Effects to convert a series of still images, raw files, to a time-lapse video sequence. So the idea would be you take your camera out there, you throw it on a tripod, connect it to an intervalometer, and you just set it to run and shoot 500 photos, and then afterwards, in After Effects, you combine them all to make a nice, smooth, beautiful, very rich, very deep time-lapse clip. I'm going to show you how to do it right here and right now. And by the way, you've probably seen the video running somewhere here on screen. I'm not sure quite yet where I'm going to put it. But with that out of the way, oh, I, I should add, if you do enjoy this tutorial and you feel like you've learned something from it or gained something, well, would you go ahead and subscribe to my channel? You can use that button down there uh, or up there or depending on where it is, depending on where you're watching this video. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you never miss another video tutorial in the future. Uh, let's jump into After Effects and begin checking this thing out. All right, first and foremost, I'm going to create a new co composition here, and I'm going to go with like a 21-9 ratio of 3360 by 1440. It's kind of like your cinematic ultra wide screen. We can name our uh, composition whatever we want. I'm going to go uh, time lapse, and I'm going to choose a frame rate a frame rate of 30 frames per second. Reason being, I know I'm about to import 687 frames. Uh, well, number one, 30 frames per second is going to ensure that I have a beautiful and smooth time time lapse. I don't want that herky jerky looking time lapse, but I know even at 30 frames per second, 680 plus frames, I'm going to have about 23 seconds of finished footage. And sure enough, because I know that I'm going to have a little less than 23 seconds of footage, I'm setting my duration here, the duration of my composition to 23 seconds. So again, you can just figure out, do the math, figure out how many, how many uh, seconds of footage you're going to have based on how many number of photos you shot and then your frame rate. So there's going to be 30 pictures uh, that I've shot displayed each second, 30 frames per second second that gives me a duration of 23 uh, a little under 23 seconds excuse me for my 687 frames we're gonna hit okay enough with the math lesson right that's ridiculous next up what I need to do is over here in my project panel which is this guy over here on the left hand side I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose import and I'm gonna choose to import just a single file and what I have here are a bunch of raw files that I shot well you can see I shot them back in 2013 at the Jefferson Memorial in Washington DC now each of these files I've gone and I've edited these raw files in Adobe's camera raw so they all have this sidecar.xmp file I probably should have converted them to DNG but it's fine to have the XMP file as well what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come up here I'm gonna click on kind just so I can see all my files together I've used Adobe bridge to batch rename them so they go from you know, 001 all the way to 687. I'm just going to select that first image. And now look at this. Uh, After Effects knows, number one, that it's a camera raw file, but also that it looks like you've got a what's called a camera raw sequence here. Would you like me to import everything here in this purported camera raw sequence, which would in fact import 1 through 687? I'm going to leave that checked on, and I'm going to choose open. And what's going to happen first and foremost is the camera raw editor is going to open and just be like, hey, check this thing out. It looks good. Looks great. Yep. Love it. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see here, I now have this sequence, 001-687.cr2. Uh, CR and I can see it's 14.8 gigabytes in size, and it is 30 frames per second. Now, what you ask, what if I, I want my frame rate to be 60 or 24 or something like that? Well, you can right-click on that sequence. You can choose this interpret footage, select main, and down here you have this frame rate option where After Effects says, hey, I, I'm going to assume this frame rate is... In this case, it's going to assume that it's 30 frames per second, which works beautifully for us. But you could go 24, you could go 60, you could go 120 if you want. I'm just going to hit the escape key because 30 works for me. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drag it out and drop it down here in my layers panel. Or really not layers panel, it's really my timeline. I'm going to drag it and drop it down there and you can see there it is. And it's going to show up here out in sort of my preview area once After Effects begins to render this frame. Now, these are raw files shot through at the time, would have been a, a Canon 5D Mark II. You, so they're they're just they're huge and remember this is a 3360 by 1440 document uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the letter S I'm gonna select that sequence and hit the letter S that brings up my scaling and I'm gonna scale this down to basically what's gonna be a little bit larger in the composition let's try like 60% 60% is a little bit too small let's go maybe 62% something like that mm, you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go 60% because here's what we're gonna do let me just deselect that I'm gonna make sure that my edges are, are looking good they aren't messed up in fact I'm gonna back out just a little bit it looks like the edges, ah, just to be safe, we're going to go 61, just to make sure we have a little bit of overlap. All right, I like that. I'm going to back this back out to about 25%. You know what? I can bring it into 33% at this point. And you have your composition at this point, but just to add a little bit more sizzle to this tutorial, let's add a little bit of cinematic movement to our time lapse. We're going to have it look like the camera is just slowly and beautifully pushing in over the course of 23 seconds 
to the Jefferson Memorial. So how are we going to do that? Well, here with this scaling, all we have to do is hit the little stopwatch to toggle the animation. You can see it's dropped a keyframe. Move our playhead all the way to the end, or you know, basically at the end, we can get in there and get it exact. Uh, but for the case of this tutorial, we're going to go quick and dirty. And I'm going to say uh, increase the size of my image to like 66%. We'll change it about 5% over the course of 22 seconds. And then I can hold down Shift. I can just select the both of these keyframes. I can right click. I can choose right down here keyframe assistant and then I can just choose like easy ease in or easy ease out. I'll probably go with an easy ease in and there we go. We've created that simple animation. You can see the, the bounding box very close to the edge here near the beginning of our, uh, our time lapse. By the time we get to the end it's zoomed in a little bit. So it's just enough to be noticeable but not so crazy that it looks like some cheap you know uh, backwater 60 frame per second shot uh, sitcom on the free cable channels. And then the last step would be to shift like your in out point. So right here we could just shift this out point to somewhere right around the end of the clip. And then we're ready to send this guy over to the render queue by going, you know, file, export, add to render queue, and then choose whatever settings you like, output it. And I've already output this to this folder called laps. You can see there's Jefferson Memorial.mov. I'm going to double click on it. I can open it up and you can see I just have this nice, very subtle, simple, beautifully smooth and perfect time lapse animation of the Jefferson Memorial as night is beginning to fall in our nation's capital. So guys, for creating a quick and easy time-lapse sequence from just a series of photos you shot, this is how you do it in Adobe After Effects. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed it. I would really appreciate that quite a bit. So for creating a uh, time-lapse sequence using nothing but raw files and the raw, unrestrained, unadulterated power of Adobe After Effects, guys, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.